Welcome to Jones and for Sports, where we make sports better. What is good, y'all? It's your boy Jones, and welcome to another episode of Locker Room Sunday. As always, I'm joined with my host, Luke. What's up, boy? 9 0, Chief. 9 0. Uh, 9 0. Should be 8 1. But we're going to get into that because uh, obviously we haven't spoken in two weeks uh, to speak on. Well, okay, hold on. We, we've talked. Don't, we've don't, talked, make, the, don't talked. make the people think we fucking hate each other. We no, like, no, 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 we're no. boys. We haven't spoken but about I reached out to Sean the day after that Steeler Cowboy game. And had I not had a family emergency, we would have recorded last week. Sean, I have the text message actually still in my text history. He said, save it for the podcast. I don't want to hear a thought from you on that Steeler Cowboy game. That's exactly what I said. That's exactly what I said. So we're all, all the most is going to come out in this episode and it's going to be another good one, man. It's going to be another good one. We're going to talk about um, what happened in week 10 and then make our usual picks for week 11. But as always, want to say thank you to our Patreon members, all our followers on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and YouTube. And if you haven't go follow us on those uh, platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Always brought to you by Jones of the Sports. We make sports better. Hmm. But let's get into it. Week nine, Cowboys, Pittsburgh. We talked about it before the game. I gave us no shot. But hmm. man, did we give us a fucking shot. And I had a lot of, normally I would just come on here and say, hey, you guys beat us. It is what it is. But I had a few things about that game that I just didn't like. Um, one, the refs, I think, blew a few calls for us that could have swung our way. I'm not saying we would have ended up winning, but it definitely would have helped us in the end towards that end of the game. Um, and then the my two biggest things, one starting with Juju, don't start that, that coming on the star shit. You already know the problems with that. And you wanted to be well, hold on, time out. Star hold on. He's trying. He, you know he, what happened to T.O.? The same no, thing. He happened. T.O. He T.O.'d on the star. He didn't come on the star. Big difference. <laughs> right, right. But you were pushing it there. You, you lost a little respect for me when that happened. I didn't like that shit. Um, and then my other one is Claypool. Yes, he is a great, talented, young player. Love him. But slow the fuck down. You're a rookie, my guy. You're a rookie. One of these days, someone's going to pop you right in the mouth and remind you that you're a rookie. I get it. You have great spirit and all those things, but I think he does it to a little bit to a fault where he's starting to become a diva. He's showing signs of a diva already, mm -hmm. and that's not something that the Pittsburgh Steelers of all teams need again in that locker room. Mm -hmm. Right now they're winning, so everything is great, and it looks beautiful. But, you know, not saying this year, but come down the road a few years from now, when those big losses are starting to happen, how is he going to put up with it and deal with all that shit? So be a professional. We understand you're a rookie. You're having great success with the team, but don't, 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 don't get on my bad side because me and Luke will argue to the end with this shit when it comes to Pittsburgh and, and the Cowboys. But – those were really my beefs, um, but I'm very proud of my Cowboys for even putting up a fight, to, for even being in there. Uh, Gilbert played a, a great game. I think he should uh, uh, start net this week. Um, even with Andy Dalton being available, I still think Gilbert gave us a great shot to win that game. He didn't play like a rookie. He played. He didn't play scared. He knew he was going up against a great team, a great defense that was going to attack him, and they played great. Um, the other thing, Pollard, I think he deserves more touches. I, I wouldn't say he deserves to be starting, but he definitely deserves more touches because when he gets in the game, I see a different spurt, uh, a different run style, 
I'm, I'm seeing a lot better than what I'm seeing from Zeke. Now, I understand we don't have the offensive line to protect Zeke and, and our quarterback the way that we normally used to. But even still, the difference is, is clear. When you see Zeke in there and you see Pollard, the difference is clear. Zeke is, uh, Pollard is getting more yardage. Um, it's, it's just looking better. And I, I did a poll on, on Twitter, and I think 36% voted Pollard in to start. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I think he deserves to split time. But, man, um, Pittsburgh got away with a lucky one. And I know you were you were antsy during that game. It wasn't feeling very comfortable. But we should have got away with that game. But I'll let you take the floor. Go ahead. What you going to say? So, yeah, obviously – so a couple things. One, I couldn't remember where I knew Garrett Gilbert from. But I'm pretty sure I'm one of like the only 20 people on like on the face of the earth that actually watched and gave a fuck about the XFL or and the Alliance. Right. He, I knew I recognized him from somewhere, and I it's very odd. You figure like let's say the AAF was like double A, XFL was triple A, right. quote unquote, and then the NFL. Gilbert looked just as comfortable in that game as he did in the AAF. He did. Which I was surprised. You figure, again, the Cowboys, it's, it's hard for the Cowboys to replicate, or, or any team, to replicate what we do in, in terms of, like, you know, defensive scheming and whatnot and how to prep for that. Mm-hmm. Guy did a hell of a job. I, I got to give, give him, for the first time all year, I got to give McCarthy credit, Kellen Moore, the coaches actually deserve credit. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking um, of coaches, mm-hmm. our fucking – its I usually am the guy singing the praises of the defense. Like this week, for example, when we completely shit on the Bengals. Mm-hmm. There's no reason that Garrett Gilbert should have had more time and felt more comfortable in the pocket against us and been making better throws downfield than Joe Burrow, who, let's be real, Burrow's a better quarterback. Mm -hmm. The game plan that Keith Butler put in against the Cowboys was, in my opinion, lazy. I think he expected the Cowboys to roll over and die. That's, That's the Steeler way of the last few years that's fucked us, where we kind of play down to your competition, Mm -hmm. quote, unquote. That's how you lose winnable games. That, that, that's that's like the rule of football. I'll never play down to an opponent with a bad record. The Cowboys have had fucking obviously major injuries, but it's you know I understand their defense is not anything to you know ride home about, but they're still pros. Yep. Any given Sunday, Chief, there's that that is the cardinal rule of NFL football. Absolutely. Any given Sunday, if you sleep on your opponent, they they can fuck you up. Very true. The penalty you're referring to, which was the illegal hands to the face or roughing the passer against Ben that gave us a fresh set of downs on third down. That call I've seen made before. Yeah. I hate it every time. It's such a bullshit rule. Now, from the non steeler fan perspective, we saw this. The, the last the one that will always stick out of my head is the AFC title game. I think it was two years ago where it was Chiefs versus New, New England. England. Yeah. And I think it was Chris Jones literally grazed Tom Brady's face mask and got flagged for 15. Yep. That was infuriating then. Mm-hmm. I still, even if it's against, even if it's going in favor of Pittsburgh, I still hate that fucking rule. Yeah, that was. If a- there's there's a reason you call a face mask penalty is when you actually claw down on the face mask and go do the ripping or tackling motion. Mm-hmm. None of that happened. And for the record, where were these calls years ago? When Ben Roethlisberger was getting literally punched in the face by Haloti Nada and getting his nose broken. Mm-hmm. Have we either come that I'm not saying that quarterbacks need to be punched in the face to draw a penalty, but if we come to the point of like pussification where Ben can get punched in the face like X amount of years ago 
by a D tackle. And then now all of a sudden you graze a face mask and it's 15. Like get the fuck out of here. I don't mind it. I don't mind when they call roughing when they go low. Right. Because no one needs their ACL torn. I get that. I'm a big fan of when you call it for that reason. But this is nothing. Right. And but again, kudos to your D. Kudos to your offense. Kudos to your coaching staff. You know, I, I don't want to say, you know, winners just find a way to get it done. We we did come back. We held y'all to basically no points in the entire second half. Mm-hmm. And let's be real. If your defense was, I, I, I'll say, not dead last in the NFL, you probably would have won that game. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there is that. If Dak played that game, we would have lost by about two touchdowns. Yeah, right. If we had a better quarterback, um, defense playing a little bit better in the second half. Mm-hmm. Because, again, Juju had one of those second halves that really helped and saved you guys. He yeah. he, he was big in that second half. Yeah, Juju, yeah. it's such a night and day difference with Juju when Ben's playing versus anyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to, an, to answer your point on Claypool, I like – I, I love what I love anyone that does the TO on the star because it's just what you do. And it's not like, it's not like it was fucking Darius Slayton who plays in that stadium every year. Like right, no, for, for, for someone like Juju or Claypool, well, let's say Juju cause he's, he's not a rookie anymore. We play in that. We play out once every four years. And last time we played you was in Heinz field. So it, it's an irregularity to come to Jerry world. No, I get it, but doesn't make it right to do it. It's still going. I mean, you you could try to do it, but just expect someone to come take your head. Right. And right. As long as you have that in your head, fine. Now, conversely, Juju is clearly the quote unquote veteran that's taking Claypool under his wing. They're very similar guys. Mm -hmm. Personality, very upbeat, kind of like warm and welcoming. They both stream on Twitch. Obviously, Juju has a humongous following on YouTube and Twitch. Claypool is is doing his own thing. I am not surprised that Claypool will jump on Twitter, run his mouth a little bit, is what it is. Here's the difference. You called him a diva for that. Mm -mm. No, I didn't call him a diva. I said he's on his way to being a diva if he continues that. Big difference. Antonio Brown, who is the the queen – of course, Antonio Brown would is the kind of asshole who would openly criticize Ben, the coaching staff, the play calling, similar to what his cousin did two weeks ago after the Ravens uh, lost to Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. That was a that was an Antonio Brown bloodline move. When you right. see Claypool clap back to somebody or just make a statement on Twitter. He doesn't know any better, but the team's also nine and zero. Right, I get so that. Give him some adversity. Let's see what happens. We haven't lost yet. That's We're going good. to. We are not the best team in the NFL. We will lose at least one game. Let's see what happens then. But until we lose, I don't blame him for being hype. He's okay. young. Let him learn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And also, like you said, kids putting up numbers. It's he's not doing, like he's doing this thing. It, it's not like he's a fucking seventh round long snapper. Like he's a second round pick, should have been a first, mm-hmm. arguably. And he's, pro- if not for these class of quarterbacks, he probably could be the rookie of the year. Right. Let's no, just be I, real. I, 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 How I, many I, people after the Philly game went and go went to the waiver wire and picked up Claypool? I mean, I his, get it. That's, his his roster percentage like doubled. I just want to see how he's going to take adversity. And, oh, so do and I. Like that. That's going to oh, be. Trust me. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not just. It, it's not you too. Steeler fan, or it's not just you. It's Steeler fans. We also all steal. Any normal, rational Steeler fan is expecting the loss. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose to fucking Jacksonville. We won't probably, but would it shock me? No. Jacksonville seems to know how to play us very well. And granted how they just played against fucking Green Bay, whoo, that's a trap game. Yeah. All right. So now we'll move on from the rant, and we'll go into some of the games that we saw last week. Yeah. 
one of the first ones that caught my eye was the Buffalo and Bills game. That one we already knew going into it was going to be a good game. Mm -hmm. But the way it finished just topped it off and made it the game of the possibly of the year with the way it finished Mm -hmm. with a DeAndre Hopkins on three people, like he said in his interview, topped off topped off the head and 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 finished that with a, a touchdown game winner. Yeah. One of the best receivers in the game made an argument to be the best receiver in the game right now this year. Um, and Kyler Murray, in my opinion, has definitely made a name to be put into the MVP uh, discussion. Not at the top, not second, but he's in there now because not only is he putting up numbers, but just watching him, the eye test shows you how hard it is to manage him. Because he's like a Lamar Jackson, but faster, quicker. Uh, he knows how to manipulate the defense to where they they're thinking he's going to run it, and then he just pulls back and, and tosses it to someone uh, someone else, kind of like a Patrick Mahomes. Um, he makes plays for for himself and so many other players. So um, I think he definitely uh, put himself in the MVP conversation, and the Cardinals are definitely a team to look out for uh, going forward. They still have some holes. And um, you know, on their defense and and things like that, but they're definitely uh, a team that I put everyone on notice to watch out for. And the Bills yeah. still did great. Josh Allen still playing um, phenomenal, but he came up against a great team that's fighting for something. Yeah, Buffalo obviously should have won the game. Kyler Murray had other plans. I'm not going to talk about Buffalo because I they're still dangerous. They're still yeah, putting up. Um, Josh Allen's not going to win MVP because it's yeah. not no, it's not September anymore. Um, I am a big fan of trying to figure out because MVP, unless it's like some ridiculous season or ridiculous stat line, like Christian McCaffrey, MVP candidate when he stays healthy because he does ridiculous shit. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, bank on it being a quarterback. Kyler Murray is exactly what a Raven fan should wish Lamar is. What yeah. I mean by that is a actual dual threat. Right. Exactly. Not a one and a half. Yep. Kyler Murray. And again, if I am an NFL scout, I would I love a Murray, a Jameis Winston, someone with a baseball or a Russell Wilson. Someone with a baseball background, because that tells me two things. One, you can't play baseball with a weak arm. Right. And if you if you do, you're probably a first baseman, and you're sure as shit not, not going to be in the weight of an NFL quarterback. You're going to be like my size. That's lineman size. Aside from that, Kyler Murray is as quick and agile and these baseball quarterbacks, who we've seen Russell do it, not so much Winston, but we've seen Russell do it, the ability to make the awkward throw. Mm-hmm. Kyler can throw out of like eight different arm slots, and it's money. Yeah. And his deep ball accuracy is amazing. Mm-hmm. Kyler is also number one in fantasy points. I did not know that. Because, well, let's be real. He runs and throws for about four to five a game. Right. Come on. So take that alone. Plus, let's be real, DeAndre Hopkins absolutely matters. And I would love to have this debate maybe next week when we're joined by E and Freddie, one of our loyal Mm -hmm. Patreon members. But right now, Andre's class is – Julio. Mm-hmm. Michael Thomas is the way Julio or I see those two do ridiculous shit all the time. Like like the Instagram meme says, when DeAndre went up for that catch and you saw the Jordan logo you know the Jordan glove rise up. Like he, I, this, yeah. A hundred percent. Not even close. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 
the Cardinals are fucking dangerous. And they're doing this without, in my opinion, their absolute best player, which is Chandler Jones. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine that team with Chandler Jones right now? Right. That they a would consistent, be that, a consistent pass rush demon. The Cardinals yeah. are fucking scary. They're going to be in the playoffs because it's expanded. But they, they mm-hmm. might be if it was the old format. Right, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, the Cardinals are real. And Thursday night is uh, – that's a hell of a game. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get into that. Oh, yeah. Um, another interesting game that I thought um, we should speak about was the Seattle and Rams game. Yeah. Um, Seattle started off hot. Russell Wilson started off hot. But since – Maybe last week or a week before that, he's been a turnover machine. Yeah. And just doesn't look like himself. Now we knew the defense had has their problems because they're one of the worst defense, if not the worst yeah. defense in the league now. Yep. So for him not to play him the way that he needs to play when you got a defense that's allowing so many points. That's not going to work out. So my question, my first question to you is, are you still confident in Seattle after this big loss? Now, no disrespect to the Rams because the Rams are a great team. Um, Their defense is underrated. They're one of the best defenses in the league. Uh, And people don't talk about that too much, but they're definitely going to get their respect today. Um, Mm -hmm. But still, Seattle did not do do themselves a favor with – Russell Wilson not playing at his top. Yeah, I um, I'll start with the Rams. The Rams are good when they decide to be. Yeah, right. That's the Rams true. to me are the epitome of bi- bipolar football. Right. They have the pieces. They have the team to be great, but they just so two games off. stick out of my head. A, the loss at Miami, and don't give me that. Oh, we flew across the country. Bullshit. That's just a time difference. Mm-hmm. It's it's still football. Still football. Yeah. You still have film on everything Miami does, and it doesn't matter if it's Fitz or fucking Tua. It yep. shouldn't matter. You look like dog shit in that game. And for what it's worth, you just lost Andrew Whitworth for at least the next six to eight weeks. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now Goff, you, who's fumble you. prone and panic prone, lost his best old lineman. Yep. That hurts a lot. A lot. On the good side of things, Jalen Ramsey's the best corner in football. Mm-hmm. He's got he's got back his groove. Yeah. Well, it was Gilmore. I think Ramsey reclaimed number one. Mm-hmm. No human alive should be able to hold DK Metcalf to two for twenty six. Yeah. And shame on Seattle for not targeting him more, because I don't think there's a human alive. That can, if you give him at least five targets, just test the waters. Just give him the high balls. Yeah, Jalen right. could exactly. probably knock it down, but good luck boxing out Metcalf. Mm-hmm. And then... I think we lost you for a second there. You lost me? Yeah, you're back. Okay, I'm back. Yep. Oh, I know why. Well, anyway, I'll keep talking while I update this. I'm on all the right. wrong Wi-Fi network. But um, so can we also acknowledge that in the hierarchy of NFL running backs in terms of importance to their team, Chris Carson is easily top five? Yeah, I agree. Definitely, he's made his mark. I mean, he's he's solid. Totally. Yo, you got me. Yep, you're there. Okay, good. I I had to switch to the strongest Wi-Fi signal in the house. No problem. But, yeah, but Chris Carson, good at pass pro, good at pass pro, and is versatile enough to fit that offense perfectly. Yeah. Case in point, week one, he dropped like 40 points in fantasy because he was catching touchdowns all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to say, oh, well, you were facing Atlanta, I don't care. We didn't know how bad Atlanta was, and we didn't know how dangerous Seattle was going to be at full full click. Mm -hmm. 
So let's let's put some respect on the name of Chris Carson. I think he's earned it, and every, he gets hurt too fucking much. Yeah, that's the problem. They yeah. have eight fucking running backs, it feels like, between Homer, DJ Davis, you know, all these guys who are good, and I'm not, I don't want to see Chris Carson's snap count diminish, but you got you can split 25% of the carries amongst at least Homer and somebody else just for the name of just for the sake of keeping Chris yeah. Carson healthy. I'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, we, Seattle has no fucking defense. So let's, let's just ignore them. Yeah. That's just completely. Uh, Jamal Adams, by the way, for what he was traded for needs to play like it. Yeah. The way Minka did last year. Mm-hmm. Yo, understand you're good. You're young. We know you're good. You're, there's no one at safety who's feared more than Jamal Adams. You got to make fucking plays, man. And we've seen you do it for sh- in shittier teams. Oh, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no fucking excuse. None. Absolutely. Sorry. No question. Definitely got to um, play better. That defense has got to play better. Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson is going to have to start playing better, getting back into that MVP uh, format that he was in the beginning of the season because – Honestly, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about them being my pick to uh, yeah. come out of the uh, NFC. So the NFC is weird though because we we'll we'll see Tampa get their doors blown off by a team yeah. like New Orleans, and then we'll see New Orleans lose to fucking God knows who. Right, exactly. Yeah, it, I don't know. The NFC is is definitely up and down this year. Well, speaking of the NFC, the NFC West happens to be the host of our Thursday night game. Mm-hmm. So shall we shall we make our picks for the week? Yeah, let's do it. Let me start this one off. Cardinals go to Seattle. No fans. I don't really care. Right. No talk. Either about. way, I am a hundred percent taking Arizona. Mm. I think this is a one that I'm um, Seattle's gonna need to bounce back. I can definitely see Cardinals winning this. They're on a hot streak right now. Yep. But I think this is a game that's um you know, Russell Wilson and that team is going to have to bounce back because if not, there there's going to be some real turmoil in that that locker room. Uh, so mm-hmm. They're going on a bad streak. So um, I think Russell Wilson b- bounces back. It'll be a close game. I'm going with Seattle on this one. Um, next one, we got Stillers Jaguars. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, that one. Well, it's right. Allow me to take the floor. Um, so yeah, we seem to have a problem with Jacksonville, but the last time we played them, they had Ramsey, they had Ngakwe, they had, uh, Calais Campbell. They had all these pieces. They don't have those anymore. The only one left is Miles Jack. Right. Um, I don't see them. I don't see their receiving core. Who's their best receiver? Chenault, Chark. Like they have decent receivers, but if Minshew is still getting benched, I don't trust this rookie to be able to pick up our blitz. Yeah. Um, and again, not to mention, even even if Alu Alu doesn't have a, a you know a great game, there's four other guys plus probably Vince Williams that are trying to kill you. Um, yeah. this strikes me as the kind of game where, you know, Minka or Hayden will get a pick, maybe Cam Sutton, cause he's been playing out of his mind. Um, I don't, I, for some reason we're going to win this game, but I don't think it'll be comfortable. This, this, this game kind of scares me a little bit. It just, in terms of like, don't bet this game, don't bet the spread. Don't bet over under you want to bet outright. I'd still put the money on Pittsburgh, but. I, I don't see a runaway here. Hopefully, I'm wrong. I, I see it differently. I see you guys, uh, especially after you bounced back this uh, past week, thinks you'll keep the, the the foot on the gas against these bad teams um, and and win in, win this one handedly. If not, then hey, there's some definitely some things that you guys have to work out. Um, yeah. On on both sides. 
Uh, next, you got the Lions and Panthers. I'm going with the Lions on this one. Is that uh, game at Ford Field or is it at Bank of America? It is at Bank of America. Then, yeah, I'll give me the Lions. Yeah. The Lions should not – the Lions are terrible in their own field, which is weird. They should mm-hmm. have lost to the fucking football team. Like – Right. They're good at certain points, but – well, the Lions are one win away from being 500. That division is close. That well, division is very close. All four of them are in contention. Well, the technically. Vikings, well, who takes the Bears seriously? Nobody. Right, but they're, they're they're somehow getting out W's. They're getting W's. They're right. they're not winning them handedly, but they're getting W's. Right. Well, so, no, no. I will take. Actually, no. I'm going to take Carolina. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with the Lions on this one. Uh, they have a better running uh, – not running back, but a run, run offense right now. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Yeah, we also we all know you have DeAndre Swift in fantasy, by the way. Absolutely. Who, yeah, I, I drafted him too. I actually just traded him in one of my other leagues for – in a, in a six-player swap. Mm. But – uh. He was he's 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 good. Yeah, he, yes. He, he he progressed quicker than I thought he would coming out of Georgia. Mm-hmm. Happy he did cuz I I'm one of those weird people like I want the Lions to do good. I'm a fan of when like the like the legacy teams like the Bears or not right, I, right. fuck the Packers but the Bears, you know, the Cardinals, the oldest team in football, mm-hmm. teams like that. I want them to do good. It's good for the league when a team like Detroit is in the playoffs. Absolutely. I agree. I agree hundred percent with that. Um, next game, Patriots, Texans. Pats, Tex. Oh, give me the fucking Patriots. The Patriots yeah. just stopped arguably the hardest offense in the AFC to, to handle. Right. Now, granted, you could credit that probably somewhat to the absolute monsoon. Yeah. Absolutely. That was the Sunday night. Especially that last drive. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'm not going to shit on Lamar this week because Anytime you see receivers barehanded, that tells you everything. Yeah, exactly. No one's catching shit. Willie Sneed, who's usually pretty sure-handed, dropped a couple that were like right in his fucking chest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the weather was was horrible, but that's what's expected when you go to uh, Foxborough. Yeah, there's always like that. Yeah, but in ter- um, the the Texans to me, I don't really see them. Doing yeah. They- much- they can't get anything going right for them. Um, a good game coming up: Texans Ravens. Division. Titans. Who Ravens. You got? Titans. Sorry, Titans Ravens. That's a good one. That's a great um, one. I'm going to take Baltimore because I think Baltimore. If you're them, you have to hit the panic button. If you want yeah. any hope, again, you have Pittsburgh at the back end of this mm-hmm. the week after. If you have any shot. Of staying of winning this division, you have to win this week just to keep it. What are we up? We have a three game lead on them with how many weeks to play? Seven, seven. Yeah. So if you have any shot, you have to beat us. You have to win this week and then come to Pittsburgh and beat us there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I agree 100. percent The Ravens. This is a must win for them if they want to catch Pittsburgh. Um, you don't want to be one of those teams that sitting in the, the wild card spot, um, especially with the way things are going right now. There's a yeah. lot. Of- you don't want to have to go to Kansas City and play Pat. You yeah, don't. You just you, don't I mean, want to do that. So um, it's very important that you and guys. They, they, and also, they're in a shit spot, too, where let's say they get one of the wild cards, which is realistic. Mm-hmm. You don't – I mean, there there is no NFC East. You don't want to play the – you don't want to play – the Steelers this year, no, we know how to play you. It's going to be close, but we know how to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play Buffalo. Right. Especially if Lamar's throwing is not on. I don't want to play Buffalo or yeah. fucking Miami. Or Miami, yeah. Yeah. Or nor do I want to play the Colts. Or The Colts could easily win that division. The, in the, in the, the, with the AFC is there's a lot of great defenses on in the AFC. A lot of great defenses. The Colts though. are – the most underrated. I think I said this last episode. The Colts are are very sneaky good. Mm-hmm. They're good at. I, I understand Baltimore ran train on them, but if you've you play them once, 
I get it. You play him twice, expect adjustments. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that I'm I'm with you on that one. I'm going with the Ravens because it's a must-win game for them. Um, yeah. but I would not be shocked if Titans pulled it out. Um Eagles, Browns, Browns, Eagles just can't get anything right. If you can't beat the New York Giants, uh well, 12, Let's let's no offense to the Giants. Giants have been playing a lot better over the past few weeks. Can we acknowledge that the Giants should probably have a winning record? Right. If they had Saquon and a few other guys that, that offense not even uh, offense they've get they've right. gotten they've gotten the fucking dagger to the asshole like five times this year. Yeah. Like the cowboy game when Dak broke his ankle. Mm-hmm. They should have won that game. They, they fucked should've. that up. Yep. In like heartbreaking fashion. That's happened like four times. Mm-hmm. And if the Giants had won two of those games, they'd have a manhandle on that division. Yeah, exactly. And that's the crazy thing where the Eagles are still a, a top of this league uh, with uh, this division with yeah. three wins and a tie. Right. Now, mind you, and that tie was against the fucking Bengals. Now, yeah. let's be real. I mean, I think I speak for both of us. Cleveland should win this game. Chubb's they back. Can. God help everybody. Yeah, and especially when they run the ball. They had two 100 uh, rushers last week. That's the key to them winning. It's yeah. not Baker Mayfield. It's the run yeah. game. They can't stop Daniel Jones running. Exactly. So I expect you to stop Chubb and Hunt? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Um, next one, we got Division Falcons and Saints. Saints, I got even with Drew Brees out. Uh, you still got Winston back there, who still got a great arm, who's mm-hmm. played in this league for a few years. He'll throw a few to the other team, but he'll give you a few for your, your team as well. So, and the Falcons just can't get it right. So no. I'm going with the Saints. And the defense on the Saints have been playing better over this past few weeks. They're starting yeah. to look like the defense that everyone thought they were. Um yeah. So I think the, the Saints will get this W. Am I the only one who's annoyed that they won't let Taysom Hill just actually play quarterback? Yeah. I mean, that's I, what he did in college. He's good. He he can do it. Yeah. Like, I get it. You paid Jameis. I still don't know why you paid Jameis, but I guess it's better to have him now when you need him. Right. But it, Taysom, like, I get – the like what the Bears do with Cordero Patterson. It's good to have a molt like the Swiss Army knife guy. Taysom Hill is amazing at it. Mm-hmm. But for he's also a fucking quarterback. Let him be a quarterback. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Let him do it. And I'm pretty sure he's second string on the on the team. So why not? Right. Um, Bengals, Washington. I can see this being a close game, but I'm going with the Bengals. Uh Alex Smith has been playing. He should automatically – I know we spoke about this when he first came mm-hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago. He should automatically get comeback player of the year just for even stepping out there. Oh, yeah. He's gone through. Um, but not only that, he's actually played pretty good. Last game was close enough to win that game. Um, I think – I forgot what what happened, what lost that game, but he was close enough. He put them in position to win that game. And um, with a front seven like they have – Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they made this a close game, but I'm going with my rookie of the year, um, Joe Burrow, to win this game. Yeah, I'm also going to take Cincinnati, but buyer beware. Um, we just put out the blueprint on how to manhandle Joe Burrow, which I hasn't really – the only other team to do it this year has been Baltimore. Just mm-hmm. play AFC North football. Zone blitzes and blitz often. Mm-hmm. And you'll rattle them. The, the the Washington can do it. They oh, absolutely can. It was uh, Chase Young's dumbass yeah. who made a horrible fucking penalty at the end of that game to lose that for them. That's what it was. I remember rookie mistake. Very bad rookie mistake. Very yeah. bad. Um, Jets Chargers Chargers. Next, we really get this one. Next, shouldn't blow this one. Dolphins, Broncos. By the way, hold on. Would it surprise you if the Chargers actually fucked up and lost this game? It would. It would surprise Oh, it wouldn't shock me at all. I would just laugh my ass off. (laughs) It would shock me because, oh, man, 
that uh I just couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. If it did, then man, that that's you guys are just having the worst luck of the year with yeah. these bad losses. Um, but an interesting one, even though it's not the greatest game on schedule, but it's an interesting one for us on Jones of the Sports because it it holds dear to our one of our hosts in E and one of our closest fans, um, Freddie. Uh, being the big Miami fan that he is, him and E's team are playing this week. So we're going to have Freddie and E on next week's episode to talk their shit on the result of this game. So, um, but just to give the picks, Freddie, my boy CJ, brother Mike, you guys got my respect with the Dolphins finally. I know you guys have been waiting for it. You've been in the comments saying giving the Dolphins some respect. You got it for me now, right? I said it. The Dolphins are are definitely a respectable team. Um, I know a lot of people question, you know, Tua coming in too early, especially with Fitzpatrick playing perfect. Not perfect, but great for them. Um, but it was the right move because Tua is ready for the moment. He's been playing great. Um, they're not asking him to do too much. Um, and that accuracy that we've seen in, in college is is, is – showing off in the NFL. He has great accuracy. He's making great plays. And that that defense of the Dolphins is, is real. They're, and special teams, oh, my God. There's, I don't think there's a better special teams uh, team in the NFL than the Dolphins because it seems like every week they're getting a block, a block punt, a kickoff return, something. They're making plays on special teams, and it's helping out that defense and that – and Tua. So – um, why should, well, with, should, should anyone be shocked that the Pates, the Pats disciple is like preaching special teams and it's clearly working? Right. It, it sure is. It sure is. And they're not too far out of uh, trying to win that division. Yep. So I, I'm clearly you're going with the Dolphins. Oh, yeah. Uh, back to misery for me this week. I uh, got a week off of not having to worry about my Cowboys losing um, against a bye week. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if we lost against the bye week too, but um, thankfully nothing happened. No injuries during practice. So yeah. we're one and oh and bye week, but this week we got to go against Dalvin cook and the Vikings. And I do not see our defense being able to hold that up. Uh, yes. We had played great. Uh, well, the last two weeks against um, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I forgot who we played before that. Um, Doesn't matter. Um, But yeah, I I just don't see us um, putting up a good enough fight to win this game. I can see us playing better because Gilbert has showed that he can play. Um, We still have a great talent on the offense with Cooper, Elliott, Pollard, CD Lamb. You just got to be able to make plays for them. Um, and our defense just got to step up. And they did that last week, just didn't do it for four quarters. And I just don't see it happening this week against the Vikings. So I think the Vikings win this probably by 14 points or something like that. Vikings, you mentioned Dalvin Cook, as you should. Um, the Bears neutralized him yesterday, and they still they did on the yeah. back of Jefferson and Thielen. Ooh, Jefferson was – Amazing. Yeah. My dumbass benched him, but I was going to lose anyway. <laughs> Coming for you, by the way. I'm eating two. The whole league can blow me. Uh, and I have only have three losses. Yeah. So. Well, one's against me. So, like I said. By fucking the point. Don't Bullshit. Get- and, by the way, we played each other the last week before playoffs. So, what do you fucking do? We'll both the number one be spot. Point. Let's get it. <laughs> uh, next game, we got the Packers and Colts. Packers, uh, Green Bay has been playing well. Green, uh, what's his name? Um, Adams and and Rogers. And, uh, Rogers have been on on fire together. And uh, what's the other tight? What uh, the receiver? Scandrick. Valdez Scantling. Scantling. He's been uh, starting to show his head now. Uh, that's big for Aaron Rodgers because he needs another weapon besides Adams, even though Adams is still going to get his 15 to 17 targets a game. Um, it's nice to have another weapon there for you. So, um, 
Colts, I can see them putting up a fight. But it, like again, like we say every week, what Philip Rivers are we going to get? And you never can count on him being a great Philip Rivers. So that's well, where, where even I'm so let's let so again say, say it with me. What hand job are we getting? The good or the bad? As you laugh in, into that cup, I see I see your face. But I'm actually going to take the Colts. Okay. Here's why. There is no reason that, that that at Lambeau Field, Jacksonville should come in there and barely lose. It's not like they won that game by three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. That game was close. And well, if, if De- Devontae Adams is good at two things, catching a football and getting hurt. So <laughs> – this would it, would, it, would it shock anybody if this was the kind of game where Adams like tweaks the ankle, misses a week, and then all coverage just shifts to Scantling? Yeah, that 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 team is that team is a house of cards. The defense is not that great, mm-hmm. uh, despite the, who they have. They should they should be. And for what it's worth, the hottest running back in football right now is Naeem Hines. Yeah, he's amazing. So he's... he took that job from Jonathan Taylor. Want to yeah. know how to know that? Because Jonathan Taylor is no longer playable in fantasy. Yeah. And I have him on one of my teams. It's depressing. Me too. Me right. Too. Naeem Hines is on fire right now. Yeah. Which means. The human hand job doesn't have to be that good to get the job done. He can dump That's it true. off the hinds. Very true. Right. And for what it's worth, the Colts don't have the worst receiving core. They have two very underrated tight ends. Mo Alley Cox, and anyone who doesn't realize this, go look at his stat line in fantasy. Mo Alley Cox is dangerous. He's also ginormous. He's a he's a beautiful red zone target for them. Mm-hmm. Pittman had a hundred yard game last week. They're uh their rookie. Mm-hmm. They still have guys like Zach Pascal who are solid pro they're solid pros. That whole team is just like solid pros, and they have the third best defense in football. You're right. So even it would it would be great if they had Malik Hooker. They don't, they can still win that game. Look at what they just did to Tennessee. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And that, and that was a humongous game for them. That was playoff probabilities were hinging on that game, like a 30-point shift if they lost that game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that, that that that's a big game for both teams. Big game for both teams. And this show is more entertaining when me and you don't always agree on everything. So I'll take the fucking Colts, and I'll take the Lions losing. I like it. Now, this game is the one that I'm definitely going to be paying attention to, which is the Sunday night game. Chiefs, Raiders, Raiders giving the Chiefs the only loss they have on their record so far. Um, big division rival, mm-hmm. paid each other. And we clearly see a little bit of more smoke added to it with uh, after the Chief, the Raiders beat the Chiefs uh, the first time, they had a little celebration uh, tour parade around the Chiefs facility and, and, uh, you know, the the team didn't like that. And the uh, what's his name? Uh the coach of the Raiders, uh Gruden could not didn't like that there was uh it was being talked about, but he knew what he was doing, he knew what he did and adding a little fuel to the fire. Cause now his team is actually what he thought it would be. All those, you know, those picks and trades, it's working out. It's working out. His team is looking nice and they beat one of the hottest, if not the hottest team in the NFL, and handedly, might I say, at that. So another big game. Um, I'm going to go with the Chiefs just because yeah. it's one of those bounce-back games that they know how important it is. Um, their only loss of the season, they want to get that back. Mm-hmm. And I, I can see this being a close game because Josh Jacobs has been phenomenal uh, for the Raiders. Uh, Their car has been phenomenal for the Raiders. They just they've been playing great football on both sides of the, of the of the ball. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a close game and it came down to a field goal or something like that. But I would also not be surprised if the Chiefs run this up. 
if they put up 49 points and you know talk shit and a fight breaks out in this game because yeah. I see this one being one of the biggest games of the year. I want to pick uh, Vegas so bad. <laughs> and it's in Vegas. Yeah, but that makes doesn't, it, even better. Like, it doesn't mean anything. The only thing that it means doesn't, it doesn't. If the, there's a kick right. to one end of the end zone, there's a fucking torch. It's the only thing that that means. <laughs> fucking, I don't see the Chiefs losing two two games to the same team against anybody. Yeah, right. I understand that Josh Jacobs is on a roll right now. The only good game that Henry Ruggs has had all year was against the fucking Chiefs. You drafted him too, didn't you? Yeah. He... Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Ruggs is dog shit so far, unless it's against Kansas City. Yeah, that's true. He is not so, sure. For what it's worth, I'm not saying he's a one trick pony. Just just cover two. Just cover two, cover two, cover. Do exactly what the fucking Raiders did to you, and you can slow down Ruggs and just I mean, I'm it's easier said than done, but stop Jacobs. Yep. I also don't trust Derek Carr to do that good against the same defense twice. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, also, one other thing I want to say is, yeah, I think we start. We got to start putting respect on the Chiefs' defense. They're not phenomenal. They're not blowing the charts out. But all what did we talk about for the past two years about the Chiefs' defense? Mainly, man. they're horrible. They're the they're liable. They would if they're the Chiefs are going to lose. It's going to be because of their defense can't stop nobody. But well, now they're actually putting a lot more respect um, on that, on that defense. And it, it's showing it, it's something that they're going to need if they're going to want to repeat. So they haven't been phenomenal, but they have definitely showed um, spurts where they, they can be one of those championship defenses enough to where, you know, hold those teams to enough points to where Patrick Mahomes and those guys can do what they do. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. Um, I am still going to say that their defense is the liability because I'm trying to pull up the stat line from the last time these two teams played, so just bear with me. Oh, well, yeah, these last time. Well, but that yeah. matters. That's their only loss, and that loss was solely on the fucking defense. Mm-hmm. The, re- the Chiefs put up 40 – I'm sorry. The Chiefs – I this is – Real quick, sidebar. NFL.com or the app can fucking blow me. Every time I go to click on a fucking game, I don't need highlights. Yeah. If I ask for that, you'll give it to me, but I'm not. Stats. Okay. Derek Carr, who is human hand job adjacent, in my opinion, yeah. threw for 347, three TDs, and was 22 of 31. Josh Jacobs had two tutties and only ran for 77 yards, which is not bad at all. At all. Receiving, Ruggs had 118 on two fucking catches. And one of them went to the house. Right. So in that same game, Darren Waller went for 48 on five with one tutty. That's a very tight end line if I've ever seen it. So to say that that defense is not a liability, I they're not bad. They're above average, sure, right. but they're beatable. This isn't the fucking Bears, Steelers, Ravens, Pats when they feel like playing defense. This is not an elite unit. No, I wasn't. I wasn't going that far, but I'm saying they're a lot better than they were last year. They're a, right. a lot better than they were last answer year. This last one, year. Answer this awesome. one question for me. If the Chiefs play anyone else in that Super Bowl last year, do they lose? Um, I, I, I still see them winning, no matter who they played. Um, Might be more of a shootout. Right. But Jimmy G's a terrible fucking quarterback is what it is. Right, absolutely. But then again, you got to think when, you know, Different teams, you got different game plans. So, oh, oh of course. I'm just so. saying that defense against the Saints, the Rams, the Seahawks, 
Yeah, but we can't. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. Jimmy G is not the answer. He no. he blew that game for them. Oh yeah. But they still did what they did as far as running the ball. Yeah. And, and made some plays. Um, they were they were a, possibly a catch away if Jimmy G can you know make that nice touch pass to uh, I forgot who it was, uh, but he completely missed them and that could have blown open the game for them. But I I'm I'm just saying that that defense is, has deserves a little bit more respect than they they they've getting no they're, they're uh, definitely not bad they're, right there there's 32 teams in the league they're in the top 16 mm-hmm. right I, and that's a I, big that's a big plus they were they were dead last i think two years ago dead last so to to be in the top 15 top 16 that's 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 a big uh uh step in the right direction if you want to repeat mm-hmm. um now moving to the Monday night game, which is another great game, is the Rams and the Bucks. Who do you got? Real quick, I get that Tampa is the you know Ringling Brothers circus right now in the NFL in terms of like, oh, all eyes here. I need Tom Brady to retire for like a million and a half different reasons. It seems like every other fucking week they're on Thursday. Sunday night or Monday. Yep. I'm really starting. And the only Bucks fan I know is not even watching this year because of the fucking political nonsense, which I told him is pretty much over. <laughs> but he's just a stubborn asshole. So let him be a stubborn asshole. Mm-hmm. Anywho, aside from my rant being over now, I personally think that the Bucks shit the bed again. I can see it happening. Yeah, the, the Rams are – remember, the Rams were a good game plan away from being a Super Bowl winning team. Yeah. With largely the same unit. Yep. And they still have enough pieces to do this. Mm-hmm. Here's my big concern. I think I brought this up earlier. Andrew Whitworth being basically out for the remainder of the regular season – is a death blow to Jared Goff's confidence. Mm -hmm. There is no team in football outside of maybe Pittsburgh and Baltimore I want to face worse with a a backup left tackle than fucking Tampa. (laughs) Yeah. Tampa will hunt the shit out of Goff, expect a humongous fantasy day from Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, and Tyler Higby. Yeah. Because I don't really th- – they're not going to complete any throw farther than 20 yards. Right. They just – I don't see how it's possible. Yeah, it's, it's going to be – like you said, that, that injury is going to be a big loss for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, gonna, he's going to have to get the ball out quick, like you said. It's not going to be a lot of deep passes. If it is, it'll probably be the Woods. Uh, yeah. Other than that, it's going to be a rough one. But who you who you got? Who did you pick on this one? Is the game at Tampa? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Okay. So actually, let me look up one other wild card real quick because I'm actually curious. Um, my decision hinges on what I'm looking up. Okay. Let's see. Okay. There's no rain, no wind. I'll take the Rams. Okay. What I have noticed, for example, the, the when the Rams went and played Miami, correct me if I'm wrong, there was some sort of weather in that game. Yes. Not only are the Rams in a city where it barely ever rains, but their fancy new stadium is also indoors mm-hmm. for the or hybrid, but indoors. Um, those types of like look at the Saints when it's cold or when it's wet, they tend to not do well. LA is no different. I don't. If you're telling me there's no wind and it's going to be in the 60s and no rain, why not? Sean McVay is too good of a coach. He knows they're outmatched on the line. Yeah. So 
I fully expect a lot of dink and dunk bullshit that Tampa seems to not struggle with, but has shown vulnerability to. Yeah, definitely. And, and dink and dunk that. bullshit. And let's also be real. Tampa is going to be in the playoffs because Carolina and Atlanta suck. Yeah. And they're not going to win the division because they lost any shot of a head and head or head to head with New Orleans. With New Orleans, yep. So they're six and three, seven and three. You're going to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. At this point, the Rams are in an absolute dogfight for that division. They yep. desperation will. This is when desperation starts to kick in. You got to win these games. Yeah, these are tough games. This is a big statement game. Big, big statement game. And what I love about this matchup is these are two similar teams. They got two uh, offenses that are, are, are big, that got a lot of talent on, on the receiver side, um, running, running back side. Um, And then you got two great defenses. So, man, this is going to be a close one. I think this is going to be a close one. Uh, Like I, I can see a Brady, Fuck up game, like you said. Um, you know he struggles against great, good teams sometimes. Um, great defenses. I can see him turning over the ball a few times. I can see it going both ways on both sides. I see a few two turnovers on both sides of the ball. Damn, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Rams only because I see. He didn't think I'm gonna go with the Rams only because I see Tom Brady making a few more mistakes, and I also see the Rams' offense uh, blowing up. Start. I, I feel like we're gonna start to see that Rams of old, where you know they start op- opening up the playbook against this team because. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to do that against good defenses. You got to show, start showing them things they haven't seen on tape. And um, I would know that Tom McVeigh would love nothing more to get one back against Tom Brady. So yeah. I can see that happening in this game. But I see it being a close one. Yeah. So we both got the Rams on that one. And that is final of the week. And – that is about it. So is there anything else you want to speak on before we wrap this up? Nah, I'm all good. Alrighty then. So you guys, you guys know what, what to do. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, comment, share. And as always, it's your boy Jones, Luke, Locker Room Sunday, Jones of the Sports. We make sports better. Peace. Jones of the Sports. We make sports better.